Another labeling strategy, and this is actually brand new for the 2018 edition of NFPA 70E, is labeling complex systems. And by complex systems, what I'm actually referring to is if you perform an arc flash study, use the software and perform calculations, you look at a more complex uh, single line drawing. And suddenly the question becomes, well, well if I'm going to perform arc flash calculations, of course I want to base this on the normal configuration, the normal short circuit current, the normal configuration of ties open or closed or, or whatever you happen to have. And then alternative scenarios or alternative configurations, maybe the tiebreaker was normally open and, and now what happens if it's closed? Maybe an alternative utility configuration, emergency mode. I mean, you get the idea. If you have larger complex systems, you can have all kinds of different scenarios. And then the question is, well, which scenario do we put on the label? Or how, how do we even address this? And it, there are a couple of, of ways that this has been done. Some would actually consider multiple labels. And this is really confusing. I've seen it done, but it can be unbelievably confusing. And there, there are schools of thought, you know, definitely against doing this. Uh, but you may have a label that indicates the information for normal configuration and maybe a label for one of the alternatives and, and maybe yet another alternative configuration. And, and I'll, I'll tell you, you know, it goes back to the old adage, if you have more than one choice, you've got more than one way of messing this up. And so this was not a good strategy if you have complex systems. Another strategy, and many would use this, is they would just look at it maybe from a legal perspective. Well, let's just put the worst case out there. And they would just have one label, and it would be based on the worst case scenario. Well, the problem with this one is worst case may be based on some very limited scenario that, that happens maybe once every couple of years, or maybe it's just so infrequent. But if your labeling strategy is based on that scenario, now you have you may think of it as like a penalty for uh, your, your PPE because it's based on, on this worst case strategy. Others have actually opted to just have labeling that, that'll have the PPE based on normal configurations only. Uh, you know, if, if you're in a, an emergency mode or generator mode, sometimes the, the PPE level goes up because of clearing times. And there may be a note that says, you know, do not perform live work during the emergency mode. There's, you know, different schools of thought on that. But there was a new addition to the 2018 edition of NFPA 70E. And uh, I wrote an article about this as well. I guess I didn't mention, I'm, I'm one of the uh, contributors to Electrical Contractor Magazine. So I have a lot of articles that go out there. And uh, this was one of them. This was uh, several months ago. And th this new exception that was added was because of complex systems. And the new exception simply states uh, in supervised industrial installations, and you have conditions of maintenance and engineering supervision, and qualified persons are the only ones that are going to work on the system, that the information uh, in H1 through H3, and that's the voltage, the arc flash boundary, and then the, the PPE, it can be documented. So it's readily available to people that are going to basically be performing the energized work. So the idea behind this, the concept, was you don't have to put anything on your label. And I know this flies in the face of, of what we're used to. But what you can do is instead reference the department, the group, the person that has the, the report, the arc flash study. And so what you do is you look at, okay, what configuration are we in right now? Let's look at the report. Let's see what configuration we're in. Let's see what the uh, information is for that configuration. And let's dress and protect ourselves based on what we're actually operating, the mode that we're actually operating uh, under right now. And that way, instead of having multiple labels or worst case or whatever, um, this is a method. You don't have to do this. I know a lot of people look at this and think, you've got to be kidding me. I, I don't want to do that. that. That's fine. You don't have to. Uh, it's just an option uh, given as an exception in uh, 130.5H for equipment labeling. This is uh, the article that I was referencing. I, I write a lot for Electrical Contractor Magazine, and then now and then some of the articles will be reprinted and referencing them at the Brain Filler website. So if you go out to uh, brainfiller.com, just the resources tab, um, I think there's one more tab under that that says technical uh, articles, uh, you'll find the article about eliminating the information for, for complex systems. <laughs>